Savior, Jesus Christ, and to Minister Lassabas in the house, to our deacons that we have here today, and pray for those that are out, uh, to our young babies that are, we strongly need to be the example before them. And to you, my sisters and brothers in Christ, it is indeed a pleasure for me to stand before you to proclaim the word of God. But all throughout the morning, the word has been preached. Our Sunday school lesson was inheriting the kingdom. And you can't inherit the kingdom if you don't have the fruit of spirit. And the fruit of spirit consists of nine. Not one, not eight, not seven, but all nine. You must have the fruit of spirit to inherit the kingdom of God. Inheriting the kingdom of God don't mean when you die. It means you having peace and joy and love and all that on, on why you own this earth. So when you get up there, you know you're already going to lay back. Hello? And then Deacon Harris came across with whether you are a chicken, a turkey, or a crow. I don't know about you, but I want to be an eagle. And I, I, you know, I have to give God the glory because all my life I've soared to heights that was beyond my understanding. But once I got to know him for myself, <laughs> I understood why I was moving up and up, even in the world of man. Amen? Amen. Amen. Today we're not going to hold you long and we're going to talk to you from Daniel 6. Daniel? Daniel 6. Daniel 6. And put your eyes on verse 19 through 23. Daniel 6. Daniel 6. Verse 19 and 23. And when you have it, please stand. Daniel 6. Daniel is in the Old Testament, bit where you find him. Between, uh, between Ezekiel and Job. Daniel 6, verse 23. I mean, yeah, the 19th and 3rd, 20th. Daniel 6, starting with verse 19. Amen. There you go. And it reads Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the dead lion. And when he came to the den, he cried out with a limited voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O oh Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thy servant continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O oh king, Live forever. My God has sent an angel and has shut up the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me. For as much as both before and before him innocence was found in me and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Then the king said, then was the king exceedingly glad for him. 
and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no man of hurt was found upon him, because he believed his God. You may take your seats. The title of our message this morning is just believe in God. Just believe in God. As we look at our country and the world today, we see there's so much unbelief in the world. We, we know that a lot of people are not being obedient to God's way. God tells us in Proverbs 1 to what? Keep his commandments and keep his law and train up a child in the way that he should go. And we know what the Bible says in that in Matthew 6, 3 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. What are these things? You will have all of the things of the fruit of the Spirit that we talked about. You will have love. You will have joy. You will have peace. You will have long suffering. You will have gentleness. You will have meekness. You will have faith. And most of all, temperance. Tempers that mean Jesus is leading you. But a lot of us, we're so selfish. We want things to be done our way. And we go around talking about people, putting people down. But I want you to know, you don't have to worry about what people say about you. You see, because all of those that are talking ain't doing nothing but hurting themselves. Because the Bible tells us we should not be busy about us. We should not be talent tellers. We should not be liars. We should not be haters. But we are to be in love with one another. Jesus says a new commandment I give you that you love ye one another as I have loved you. By this all men will know that you are my disciples. So if you're doing the things of the world, talking about people, putting them down, scandalizing their name, uh, stealing, doing all those things, you're not a child of God that we serve. So when you get into problems, you can pray all you want, but God do not hear your prayer. Hello? As long as that sin is overclouding the Spirit of God, He does not hear your prayer. Hello? He, but he says in 2 Corinthians 7 14, if my people who are called by name shall humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, seek my face, and pray, I will hear from heaven. Forgive their sin. That means we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So when you're around people that say they've been this way all their life, you better get away from them. Hello? Because there's only one sinless person. And his name is Jesus Christ. He's our Lord and Savior. So, you know, you have to learn this for yourself. But as we look at this book of Daniel here, you will see that Daniel, the, the book of Daniel was written by Daniel himself. It was written for historical purpose to give account of the faithful Jews who lived in captivity. You know what captivity is? A lot of our people are in captivity right now. They're in drugs, they're in alcohol, they're in lying, they're in homosexuality. They're doing the things that is not of God. They show how God is in control of heaven and earth. And whatsoever God said, he would do, guess what? What he said. 
he will do it. He's directing the forces of nature, the destiny of nations unite in the care of the people. See, Daniel had a great testimony. Because when Jerusalem was overtaken by Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel in the Hebrew boys was taken captivity and taken down into Babylon. And the Bible says uh, the king selected a few of them, a few of the young people, and set them aside from the rest of their kindreds and, and told his servants to, to, serve, to serve them of his table. Okay? Because they were, they were uh, seem to be educated children. So he wanted to set them aside and feed them off his table. So that's why it's important. You have to know what table you're eating on. Amen. Hello? Amen. And, and the, Daniel and the Hebrew boys, they said, I'm not going to eat off the table of the king. And he went to the guy that was over them and said, look, we don't want to eat off the table of the king. This allow us to be fed with soup for 10 days. The guy said, man, I can't do this because I'm afraid that the king going to take my head. I paraphrase it now. But Daniel convinced him to give them the mush. And in 10 days after eating the mush, the king called all of the children before him and was testing them on their skills of knowledge and everything. And Daniel and the Hebrew boys stood out more <laughs> than all of the children that was taken in captivity. So you have to be careful of what table you're eating on. Just because it sounds good, don't mean it's good for you. Just because it looks good, don't mean it's good for you. Just because they say it's good, don't mean it's good. Because we have a lot of naysayers. They always go out, they say you shouldn't vote. Huh, hey, my vote don't count. But see, that's because they don't know the word of God. They don't know that God has given us this privilege to be able to be a voice in our country, in our state, in our city, in our community where we live. But we see, a lot of us are ignorant to the fact. But Daniel and the Hebrew boys didn't eat off the table. And then when, when the king saw the goodness in them, he elevated them. He elevated Daniel. And he elevated Daniel to a position of being the chief over all of his kings and queens. And the people didn't like that. You know how it is. When you are moving up, when you're moving up, everybody got something negative to say instead of giving you the glory. But Daniel didn't let the rhetoric bother him. He did not let it bother him because Daniel also saw the Hebrew boys when they went through and wouldn't bow down to the kings, wanting them to bow down to his statue. Yes, yes. And he knew his God because he prayed to his God. So that they, they went against Daniel and they told the king, went to him and said, O oh, king, <laughs> O oh, precious king, long live the king. You know, if you just set up something and have a decree that no man in your kingdom pray to any other God for so many days. So the king being the king, he thought this was good. He wanted everybody to pray to what? His king. Yeah. Y'all think about the man that think everybody's supposed to go his way to, in the United States today. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Hello? Uh, the, the king said, okay, I'll sign the decree. Not knowing that he had elevated Daniel 
And by Daniel being in his kingdom and serving the God that he served, his kingdom was being what? Blessed. A lot of times we are can be blessed by God, but we don't see the blessing because we're blind to the ways of the world. Hello? So he, he didn't see it, so he said, okay, sound good. And he signed the decree. Daniel knew that he signed the decree. But guess what? Daniel kept on doing what he was doing. And that was praying three times a day in the east. And he knew that they would watch him. But he didn't hide to pray. We got to stop being closet Christians and let people see the Jesus in us. We got to understand it's not about numbers. It is not about money. It's not about status. It's all about what? Jesus. Just believe in Jesus. And so they told the king, they went back and told the king, said, oh king, you signed the decree about others. No one in your kingdom praying to other God. But O Daniel, whom you have appointed over all the, your kings and all your queens, he's still praying to his God. Amen. Daniel knew they were going to say, but he didn't stop praying. And the, and the decree it says that anyone was praying to any other God, other than the God of Nebuchadnezzar, they would be thrown in the lion's den. Daniel knew what the decree was, but he kept praying to the God of Israel. And the Bible says that the king was upset because he knew his kingdom was prospering because of Daniel. He knew that his leadership was prospering his whole kingdom. But because man had signed a decree to sell his soul Jesus. for something that is not of God. Come on. Oh my God. He had to stand for it. Yes. And that's, that's the problem with two many of us. We will sell our soul to something that we know that is not right. And the Bible says, he, he said, oh my God, but I got to put Daniel in the lion's den. And if you look at the, look back through the chapter, they placed Daniel in the lion's den. And that night, the king walked the floor all night long. And guess what the king was doing? Praying that no hand hung would come to Daniel. And the Bible says, if you look at, look at verse 19, when we was given the message today. After the next morning, after Daniel had put it, been put in the lion's den, the Bible said the king, well, Daniel knew that the writing, then the king rose early, very early in the morning and went with haste unto the lion's den. See, a lot of people are in the lion's den with a lot of things that is going on as for lying, hatred, malice, envy. And when he came to the den, he cried with a loud, limited voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, the hope, here he is now, he has signed a decree for them to pray to his God. But he realized by him making that mistake, that there is a true and living God. He said, now, O Daniel, servant of the living God, 
is thy God, whom thou servest from tender, able to deliver thee from the, 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 from the lions. And what I want to say to you today, no matter what you're going through, if you would just believe in God, whether it be illness or whether it be money-wise, because God owns everything on this earth. You see, this money that we use is for us to use to do God's will. Yes, Lord. It's not for everybody, for a certain amount of people to get rich. But those that are rich and are receiving it in the wrong way, God is going to separate in the end when he comes. And that is, uh, he said, when he came to the dead, he cried with a loud, name of the voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, which thou continuously able to deliver thee from the lion's den. Mm. Look what Daniel said. Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. See, even though Daniel knew he was the one that signed the decree, he still lifted him up before God. See, just because somebody do us wrong don't mean that we as Christians are to put them down. The Bible said don't do evil for evil. You pray for them. And you see what Daniel did? Daniel lifted him up and uh, he said, now, live forever. My God has sent an angel and has shut the lion's mouth. God sent an angel to get the lion locked up. Don't you worry about what people say about you. As long as you're walking with God, he said, everything you touch shall prosper. Don't mean that you're going to be this high in man's eyesight, but you're going to be rich in Jesus. Hello? Obedience is the key. Obedience is the key. Follow the commandments of our God. Okay, so we all know God says, be not deceived. Whatsoever a man is told <laughs> now he said, be not deceived, for God is not mine. In other words, God sees everything that is going on. Whatsoever a man sows, that also he's going to reap. What am I saying is what grandma used to say every turn. going to sit on his own body. So if you do the wrongness, you're going to pay the price. If you do the crime, you're going to do the time. That's the way it is in simple language. If you're not doing what God wants you to do. And it, it says, for as much as his sinners was found in me, and also before thee, O King, I have have I done no hurt. Then the king was exceedingly glad for him. See, because when you know you're right, you're wrong, mm. and you do, didn't do what was right in the eyesight of God, you need to repent and be glad for your mistake. Yes. That they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no man of hurt was found on him because he believed in God. I come back to tell you, Jesus made it plain and clear. In Matthew, I mean, in John, the 14th chapter, verse 1, he said, if you believe in God, believe also in me. 
For in my father's house are many mansions. What do you mean by many mansions? There's a lot of room over here. Okay, you got to understand, hell is enlarging itself. And hell is enlarging itself because of the Satan and his followers. Hello? He said, but in my father's house, there are many mansions. If it was not so, I wouldn't have told you. I go away and prepare a place for you. And if I go away and prepare a place for you, I'm going to come back and receive you unto myself. Yeah. Now that, that lets us know that one day he is coming back. Yeah. You know, he's coming back as a thief in the night. You know, no thief ever call you and tell you I'm going to come and rob your house tonight. No thief ever come by, call you and tell you I'm going to come by and snatch them out of your truck. Hello? We have to be prepared at all times. He said, coming back as a thief in the night. He says, if I come back to receive you, I'm doing myself. And one Thomas said, Father, we don't know where you go and how you go. That's why a lot of us are lost today, because we don't know the word of God. Amen. But Jesus put it to him plainly. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come to the Father except through by me. Yeah. So you have to watch out. All these churches and places that are saying, God, God, but never calling on Jesus. You better watch yourself. Hell, because the word is true. See, the Old Testament points to Jesus coming as the Savior. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the New Testament explains. Hello? Yeah. So we have to be prepared for the, by knowing the whole Bible. Yes, Lord. Daniel is just an example to show us that we will keep our faith in Christ yeah. no matter what's going on. No matter what dead you're in. Whether it's a dead of lying, whether it's a dead of hatred, whether it's a dead of malice, whether it's a dead of thievery, you see, all you need to do is modify the members of your body. And the only way you're going to modify the members of your body is get to know Jesus for yourself. Because Jesus is the answer to have a problem. Amen. I can tell you for sure, I wasn't always like this. Amen. But I met him on my Damascus Road oh, at 40 years old. Oh. And I'm going to tell you, since I met him, all oh, those 40, since I met him, those 35 years, 36 years, who has been magnificent. Oh, and I give him all the praise and all the glory. Yeah. So I ask you this season just to believe in God. Don't worry about the naysayers. Don't worry about the haters. Because we have one that came down through 42 generations. And he walked on this earth for 33 years, teaching us how to love one another. And the Bible says he came to his own, but guess what? His own didn't recognize him. A lot of people don't even know him today. They want to know everything else except about Jesus. He came to his own, and they didn't recognize him. But he rolled in on a donkey on a Friday afternoon on a donkey. They were laying down the clothes. They were laying down palm trees, leaves, and crying, Hosanna, Hosanna to save us. But when they had been looking for one coming on a big white horse with a sword. But here it was, actually the lowly one to save them. But that same crowd, next Thursday, when they went and got my God out of Gethsemane, huh. out of the garden of Gethsemane, and took him to Caiaphas' house. The Bible said it was beaten. They spit upon him, slapped him around, did all kind of malice things to him. But they didn't have the power 
and killed him. Right. So they took him from from uh, Calvin's house to Pilate, the governor's house. They took him over to the governor and said, we have this man here that we need you to crucify. Oh. And he said, what has the man done? He said, he's teaching a doctrine other than ours. That's the problem with our world today. Everybody's teaching a doctrine except the doctrine of Jesus. Hello? All these things that we have put into our churches and claiming that people have to do, we're acting like a bunch of Judaizers. Yes. Hello? And you know who Judaizers are the church folks. <laughs> Certain things you got to do in the church if you want to be a part of it. Certain way you got to dress. You got to have a certain status to sit up front. Hello? We don't put implemented all these, all these lion den things into God's house. Yes. Yes, Lord. So, so. Thank you, Lord. But Pilate said, what has he done? Teaching a doctrine that's not ours. There's only one doctrine. One gospel. One word. And it all points to Jesus Christ. Yes, Paul said, well, I'll, I'll ask him some questions. So Paul asked him, said, are you the king of the Jews? He said, you said it. <laughs> no. Paul said, look, bring me a pail of water. Because I can't find no fault in this man. My God, my God. And I'm going to wash my hands of it. He washed his hands. He said, but one thing I do every year, I give you all the prisoners. And I have two prisoners. I have this man, Jesus, that you all want me to crucify. And I have this man, Barabbas, who's a murderer, a thief, a liar, a hater, a cheater. Whom do you all choose? But guess who them church folks chose? They chose Barabbas. Just like a lot of us today are choosing everything except the gospel in our churches. Yes, Lord. We're doing things in the church that is not part of the church. Just because there's a crowd draw doesn't mean that it's off the gospel. You better say it. You better say it. And we have to stand on God's word. Yes. We have to do it. Pilate, they took him back from Pilate's house to Catholic house. They spit up on him and they beat him and they put a crown of thorns on the head. And the Bible said the blood ran down his brow. And they beat him. And early that Friday morning, they stopped parading my father through the streets of Jerusalem with an old cross on his shoulder. The Bible said he fell down. But thank God he got up for your sake, your sake, and my sake. And he made it up to go up the hill. And then he laid down his life. They didn't take his life. If they know the Bible, he was directed from the beginning of the world to come down to be the Savior of the world. Hell? And he laid down his life. He allowed the men that he loved to put nails in his head, nails in his feet. And the Bible said he stretched him wide and they hung him high. They forgot he said if I be lifted up. <laughs> I was wrong, old man. But see, that was just a physical lift up. But the main lift up is when he ascended into heaven. And when he ascended into heaven and sent back his spirit to guide you and I. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just believe in God. And he will make you free. Amen. There might be somebody here today.